Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Kale Ortho Podcast. Today is February 20th, 2024, and today our special guest is Dr. David Saint. Dr. David Saint is the chief chiropractor and clinical director of two of the Kale Orthopedic Center's chiropractic facilities, one in Montvale and one in Stony Point, New York. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Dr. Kale. So happy to have you, Dr. Saint. So today we're going to speak with Dr. Saint about the field of chiropractics in general, uh, some of the latest advancements in the field of chiropractics, and how we can use that specialty to assist us in taking care of our patients suffering from musculoskeletal injuries. So Dr. Saint, first and foremost, why don't you just take this opportunity to teach our viewing and listening audience a little bit about yourself. Tell us you know, where you grew up and how you got into the field of medicine in general. Well, thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Kale. Um, I grew up in Rivervale, New Jersey, uh, attended Don Bosco Prep, went on to play football at Lafayette College, and got my Doctor of Chiropractic at Life University in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I've been fortunate to be around chiropractic my whole life because my father, who's still in a chiropractor at 83 years young, and uh, for myself, it was an eye-opening experience. I'll never forget one day when I was nine years old and I opened the front door and this gentleman was standing there holding his x-rays. His name was George Martin and he was a defensive end for the New York Giants and his career had been considered completely over and he was referred to my father where we had a home office and uh, he said, can I see your father? And I said, absolutely. So I get dad, this gentleman's at the front door. Well, six weeks later, Mr. Martin was back on the football field. And from there, his career continued to thrive. He became MVP of Super Bowl against the Denver Broncos. So I got to see my father working and literally transforming people's lives through, uh, through his career. And I knew it, I wanted to help people. And uh, I told my father when I was at Lafayette, I said, I want to become a chiropractor. And uh, here I am now going on 27 years in practice. Wow, what an inspiration. That's a great story. So when we talk about the field of chiropractics in general, uh, Dr. Saint, what are some common misconceptions people have about uh, chiropractic care in general, and how do you address them in your practice? Well, one of the things I hear all the time is that, well, if I go to a chiropractor once, I have to go to the chiropractor for the rest of my life. And uh, my, my answer to that is, well, you should have your spine checked for the rest of your life. We brush our teeth on a regular basis. We continue to floss and do dental hygiene and go see our dentist sometimes every six months or once a year. Most people don't even know what to do for their spine. They say, well, I just do some stretching. I drink some water. But what we've now found out is it's about keeping the body in alignment. It's keeping our muscles strong, our core muscles. And uh, most patients have to be educated. They don't know necessarily what to do. And I find that part of the visit is not just taking care of the patient, but it's also educating the patients. All right. Well, on that note, can you just sort of describe the general principles of chiropractic care and how they contribute to one's well-being? Sure. Um, well, chiropractic is premised off that the central nervous system controls everything in the body. Most people are unaware that once a sperm and egg come together, the first thing that is formed is actually the spinal cord. And the brain and spinal cord controls every single function. Around the spinal cord is the hardest thing that we have, and that's bone to protect it. And between those bones are nerves that exit, and they go to every tissue, organ, cell. And the goal of chiropractic is to increase nerve flow. We want to make sure that the body is in balance, that proper nerve flow is happening so that not only to, to muscles, but as well as to organs. So we look at the alignment of the spine and we look for areas of the spine that are lacking motion and we put motion back into the body. Great. And what are some of the common conditions that a chiropractor will typically see and treat on a daily basis? Well, typically the most common, of course, are, are lower back pain and neck pain. But however, there are other symptoms that can happen. There are symptoms that can happen in the neck headaches. There can also be symptoms that go down into the arms and the legs. People have heard of the term sciatica, which is leg pain. We've also had pain that radiates down the arms. And those are severe, typically severe irritation to the nerve roots. How do you individualize uh, a treatment plan for patients based on their specific needs? Well, the first thing when I see a patient is, is number one, having a discussion. A history is so important, understanding what the patient has done, what they're experiencing. From that history, we go into an examination where actually I'm palpating and touching the patient, putting the patient through some range of motions 
do some orthopedic tests as well. We also test some neuro neurological packages, which are parts of the skin to see how the patient is feeling. Are they sensitive and can they actually have good strength? From there, we go in and we also take x-rays. Diagnostic films and diagnostic tests are so important. Uh, first of all, looking at an x-ray, we just want to see the healthiness of the bones. Or is there any type of degeneration? Are the bones healthy? Or is there possibly even the signs of even osteoporosis starting to begin? From the x-rays, we also look at alignment, looking at one joint versus the other. From the x-ray, many times we'll be ordering MRIs because x-ray shows bone, MRI shows soft tissue. And by marrying those two tests together, we many times will get a clear indication of what's happening to the entire spine itself. Does chiropractic play a role in preventative health care? Yes. Um, f first and foremost is that if the spine is not in the correct aligned position, the range of motion of the spine, the motion itself will be limited. And when there's limitations, muscles will start to guard. And of co course, those muscles will contract and the body will just be vulnerable many times vulnerable to an injury, to a twist, a turn, quite common. I mean, literally every day I have a patient come in and says, doctor saying, I don't know what I did. I just turned a certain way. I just went down and tied my shoe and I couldn't get up. And by the time that motion or that incident happened, it was because of accumulation of time of things happening to that spine for whether it was days, weeks, or even months or years beforehand. How can chiropractic be utilized to complement other wellness services? Well, w one of the biggest things that I love uh, in our practice and what we offer is acupuncture. Acupuncture is just known to help with inflammation, help to, with pain. And uh, what we find is that when patients come into our practice, Dr. Kale, patients come in for, with two problems. We're having a chemical problem and we're having a mechanical. And patients come in and I ask them pain scale of 1 to 10, how are you feeling? 10 being the worst pain. And that basically tells us that there's inflammation going on. So something like acupuncture helps bring inflammation down naturally. And that's just one of the tools that we use along with our medical side of medically managing that patient's problem. Are there other specific exercises uh, or lifestyle modifications that you also employ to ensure that patients benefit the most from your chiropractic services? Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that we talk about during our case of review of the patient is finding out what they do occupationally. And unfortunately, we're dealing with patients now more than ever working from home. I'm finding specifically during the pandemic, patients did not have the proper workstations. Patients were working on their laptop. I would ask them, where are you using the laptop? Oh, I'm sitting on the couch. So we called it, you know, computer-itis, where the head would be forward changing posture. And what happens is that people's core muscles are, you know, repetitively, they're not being worked on. And when you have muscle fatigue, all the muscles control and support the spine. So it's just turned into a whole effect of looking at about how the body is working collectively. What are some of the recent advancements and uh, technologies that you've experienced recently in the field of chiropractics and how have you employed them and how have they benefited your patients? Uh, absolutely. So there are so many chiropractic techniques. I mean, I, I believe there are over 70 of them. Um, for myself, I use about 18 different techniques themselves. But two of the techniques that we use in our clinic, one is what I call hands-free instrumentation adjusting. It's dynamic. Um, there, when patients are seen, many times patients are concerned about quote unquote getting cracked, hearing some type of audible noises, and we use instrumentation where there is no noise whatsoever. It's light force, um, and most patients, when they get off the table, they go, "Wow!" They were they couldn't believe the experience of having something like that. Another wonderful technique that we use in our Montville location is spinal decompression therapy. It's a light force, non-audible stretching mechanism of decompressing the spine to get motion into the joint space. And it's just a wonderful tool that uh, is able to help patients who are suffering from, you know, back issues, facet injuries, bulging herniated discs. And it's another alternative that we use when necessary. And with respect to maintaining current in your field and the technological advancements that we've discussed, how important is ongoing education and training uh, in the field of chiropractics to ensure that you deliver the latest and greatest techniques to our patients? Well, 
First and foremost, not only our profession, but our state, it's mandated that uh, we do continuing education uh, within the state of New Jersey and also state of New York and matter of fact, every state in the country. Um, and it's a wonderful tool because it allows us to hear also not only the research, but also learn new things that are happening out in the field on a continuing basis. So we do a minimum of 30 hours every two years here in New Jersey. That's great. That's great to know. Well, as you know, uh, I'm an allopathic physician, uh, orthopedic surgeon, and uh, you, as a chiropractic physician, um, more, we have different approaches to patient care. Uh, many allopathic physicians have considered chiro the field of chiropractic in general to be somewhat taboo. As you know, uh, I, at the Kale Orthopedic Center, have embraced the field for over 25 years now. Um, to me, it is exceptionally important to collaborate with others uh, as we continue to care for our patients. Each one of us brings our own skill set to the, to the table in caring for the patients. How can you uh, discuss for our viewing and listening audience how we have collaborated with one another, uh, not only in the field of orthopedics, but at Kale Orthopedic Center in general with other specialties like podiatry and rheumatology and interventional pain management, and even our uh, board certified fellowship trained uh, musculoskeletal radiologists and neuroradiologists. So, so often when I see patients now over the years, coming in and happened just the other day, a patient comes in with chronic lower back pain. And first and foremost, obviously doing examination and taking updated x-rays, but not only looking at the back, but looking at the entire person. And I started asking questions about their feet and brought us some you know, questions about what they are feeling, what they can do, what they can't do. And it turns out there was some irritation down there that led me to some type of uh, you know, examination of the foot at that moment. And that patient is going to see our podiatry team because I'm concerned with the alignment of the feet that are the foundation for the spine. Along with it, uh, finding out the patient is having chronic pain for years. And uh, we're going to get that patient over to our rheumatology department because because of there's inflammation, we want to see what those inflammation markers are. The goal that I want to do is not just bring chiropractic of the spine to the patient, but I want to make sure that and we rule things out. And that is the importance of not just our diagnostic tests, but also using our medical team. And that's why it works hand in hand. And the patients that I see all see our medical team and we see the patient as a whole person. And as you know, oftentimes the chiropractors are the gatekeepers uh, into the healthcare system. Uh, patients trust their chiropractors. They see their chiropractors first, uh, often before even seeing their primary care physicians. Uh, they go to their chiropractors for headaches and jaw pain and arm pain and hip pain and leg pain. As the gatekeeper of patient care, uh, often Oftentimes that chiropractor can uh, be incredibly instrumental and influential in making that pa patient better uh, and getting that patient in the right hands. How do you first assess a patient and um, make those determinations in the office, Dr. Saint? Well, again, the clinical history, speaking with the patient, finding out, I always ask the patients, when was your most recent accident or injury. And patients look at me first and I said, you know, have you had a car accident in the last three months, six months, even about that back to two years? And how often patients think that the injuries that they've had have been a small thing. And those injuries have now complicated and they've been basically a snowball that's just getting bigger and bigger. Um, so again, working with our team and ruling things out is, is so important. Uh, and back to the diagnostic tests uh, that we use in the kale model here, the fact that we can not only take x-rays on site digitally, we see them immediately, number one. Number two, we can get another opinion of reading those x-rays right away. How many times I, I'm looking at an x-ray, want another opinion, get right on the phone to one of our orthopedists, can you do me a favor, can you look at this, what do you see, I see this here. and. Uh, uh, that just gives me comfort and just knows that the patient's also getting the best care. Then, of course, what we do in-house with our MRIs and using CAT scans and our bone density testing, that we're able to do these things literally immediately. And this is unheard of in today's world of insurance. Yeah, and I think... Uh 
you know, just going back to what I was talking about, about how a lot of doctors consider the field of chiropractic to be somewhat taboo. I think it's, it's not necessarily because of the field of chiropractic in general or what you do for our patients. It's the reputation, unfortunately, in the community that has been formed over the years where there's essentially the thought process that a lot of the chiropractors just hold on to their patients. Sometimes things get missed and sometimes those things are bad things like tumors, cancers, etc. like that. Not having the, the wisdom or the discernment sometimes to refer the patient out of the practice. A lot of the chiropractors in general uh, have developed a reputation that they tend to hold on to their patients. They'll often see their patients three times a week for years, uh, just for what they call maintenance. And all of us uh, have seen patients over the years like that, that have seen chiropractors for years, and unfortunately some bad things have been missed. So speaking of that, speak to the uh, benefits of being in an organization where you have access to medical doctors of all different musculoskeletal specialties and uh, advanced cross-sectional medical imaging at your beck and call, at your fingertips, uh, to ensure that nothing gets missed. It's not the field of chiropractics necessarily that uh, most MDs have an issue with. It's the, it's the concern that um, many chiropractors, unfortunately, did not have or do not have the wisdom or discernment as to when they should refer patients out to an, to an MD to get further evaluation and treatment. I think the thought process is that some of these chiropractors are just treating patients based on x-ray analysis alone without having an MD assess the patient, do a physical exam, take a history, get some blood work, and, and maybe some high-resolution cross-sectional imaging in addition to that management and treatment. Can you speak to that, Dr. Saint? Yeah. Um, well, the, the first thing is how the dynamics of what we have is the team approach. And again, being able to work hand in hand, specifically with our spine orthopedist that we have, Dr. Paul Boggy, Dr. Michael Denizzo, I mean, it's just absolutely wonderful. And they understand what we do as chiropractors and the benefit of what we have. I'm not a surgeon. I'm not going to go in and fix things. And they are wonderful at doing that. But what can we do on a non-invasive uh type of care and chiropractic has its role chiropractic also has its limitations and we work and collaboratively with our physical therapist chiropractic on in our side of the uh in the kale method works on the alignment motion of the spine we allow the physical therapist to work on strengthening because many chiropractors will do that in their own clinics when they're just working solo but the fact of working together and having another set of eyes is so important. Uh, myself personally, I've been so educated by our orthopedic team on what's going on with a condition known as a labral tear of the hip and how often there's an underlying soft tissue component that's literally you know, not even evaluated, not seen. It's seen on MRI image, but this gets made time a patient who has a chronic back or hip issue where there's actually another component that's going on that has to be looked at. And it's something that has been a real eye opener since I've joined the Kale team here. Absolutely. Dr. Saint, you referenced before uh, a little bit about how you work hand in hand with our physical therapist. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? What patients get seen by chiropractors? Which patients get seen by physical therapists? And how does each specialty contribute to the over overall wellness and well-being of our patients? Well, the, the dynamic that we have in our practice is that the fact that we are in the same location together. And of course, our physical therapists are experts when it comes to extremities. They're working hand in hand with the orthopedist. However, very often an extremity problem is causing another spine problem that's underlying. And the fact of, for instance, when patients come in here with whether it's foot, knee, hip issues, that they're having an underlying gait issue that's affecting their lower back. So working collaboratively with them is so important because I can address the alignment side, they're going to handle the muscle end. And then what we do is work together with a treatment plan of what they do best and what I do best and really marrying them together. I love it. Um, if we refer a patient to you for chiropractic evaluation and that patient is somewhat hesitant 
What advice would you give that patient who is considering chiropractic care, and what should he or she look for in a qualified physician? Well, first of all, I always tell a patient, come have a consultation. Consultations, we are talking, it's merely a discussion, and I would like to, you know, review your case and maybe put a set of eyes on it from a different angle. And quite often I would get patients to say yes. I'm not saying we're going to start chiropractic care, but I like to discuss more about what I could do possibly or how I would do things differently or in adjunct to what care you're, you're having right now. In regards to uh, types of chiropractors, there are numerous types of techniques based on the school that you go to. Uh, I'm a big believer that there's not necessarily one technique that's better than another, but uh, that one technique many times will work better with one individual than another. Again, the dynamics that we have within the Kale model is that we have, I don't know, how many, 12, 13 <laughs> chiropractors or even more, mm -hmm. and there's different chiropractors within our organization that offer different types of techniques. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I mean, it's uh, it's a wonderful uh, relationship that we share as we all um, assist one another in caring for our patients. Um, you mentioned before a little bit about the uh, chemical component of patients' uh, symptoms and inflammation. Um, how do you employ the usage of some uh, pharmacological agents in the management of your patient's symptoms? Well, again, part, part of our team is we have an interventional pain management team. That's wonderful. And so many times I've had patients that come into our practice and they've already been through medical management. They've been prescribed an anti-inflammatory. They've been prescribed a muscle relaxer. Things may not be really working well. They may have started some type of care, maybe trying things, you know, doing things on their own with going to the gym. Now with our team here, specifically our interventional team, it's getting to see where the irritation is happening at the spine. Um, I'm a big fan of, of medication management orally for a short-term basis. I've, Dr. Kale, been a patient myself. Uh, that's where I think I became a pretty good doctor. I've had five knee operations. I've torn my bicep tendon. So I've had to be not only a patient, I've had been on medical management. I've had to gone through a rehabilitative process. But when it comes to our interventional pain management, what I love about it is that it's putting medication around the problem. It's putting it around the nerve root, around the disc to bring inflammation down, which then makes my life easier as a chiropractor because then it's easier for me to get motion into the spine when inflammation is down. By reversing the inflammation, we always speak about decreasing pain, redness, warmth, swelling, allowing the therapist to do what they need to do. A lot of times patients come in and they're inflamed and we'll give them a cortisone injection of some sort and the patients are like, well, are you just, you know, masking the problem? Uh, but in reality, we're treating the problem. We're treating the inflammation and allowing them to uh, go to physical therapy or chiropractic and undergo some treatments to actually reverse the condition. So that's just one way that we can really collaborate with one another and caring for these patients. Uh, cortisone injections locally, oral anti-inflammatories can decrease inflammation, topical salves, but we're all trying to get um, rid of the inflammation, which seems to be the common culprit in so many musculoskeletal and, and medical conditions in general. Uh, Dr. Saint, with respect to employing such, uh, such uh, technological advancements that we've um, referenced before, what modalities do you use in the office to help our patients? I know you, you spoke a little bit about the distraction uh, methods. What other um, uh, pieces of equipment do you use in our different offices? Uh, and how do each one of those modalities uh, theoretically work to reverse pain and inflammation or correct alignment? Well, again, there's different chiropractic techniques that we talked about. We actually use different tables that our goal is to do something a little bit different with each of them. Um, we also use modalities very similar that uh, physical therapy uses. We use electrical stimulation, which helps with pain as well as inflammation. But we use a lot of manual, a lot of manual hands-on techniques. And it's important with not only working the muscle, stretching, uh, we're dealing with contraction that's happening. When, you know, many times when I'm looking at the spine, I'll see a patient and I'll even have a head tilt to one side. Well, it's because muscles are contracted on one side and elongated on the other. Mm -hmm. And the goal that, you know, with the 
chiropractic is to put the body back into balance. And, you know, these soft tissue uh, techniques that we use, again, many times patients come in here and they were expecting to be twisted like a pretzel. And there are certain techniques that we do in order to align, but we can do very soft and gentle techniques that are wonderful. Uh, I, I even take care of women that are pregnant literally up to the time of delivery. And people say, geez, how would you do that? Well, I have a special table that does it. It takes the pressure off their belly. They lay there. I have patients that say all the time, can I just stay like this doctor saying <laughs> for, for a half hour? I'm so comfortable. But again, there, there are so many different things that we can do. And I think it's more important that we have to get in front of the patient and talk to them and talk to them what they're, how they're presenting and also how they're feeling and really, you know, put the proper assessment and then put the right care plan together. Yeah. And what on, on that note, what should patients expect when they see you? Should they expect immediate relief? Is it a gradual improvement? Is it typically a short-term course of care, a long-term program that you set up? What, what, how can you set their expectations? Well, first of all, that, that is individualized for each patient, of course. Uh, age of the patient, what we're seeing with bone structure, is the bones healthy? Is there some type of degeneration? Is it just an alignment issue versus is it, uh, is it a disc component? Was there a bulging disc or herniated disc? I will tell patients this. If I was going to go to the gym and put on 10 pounds of muscle or take away 10 pounds of weight. <laughs> it takes time, effort, and repetitiveness. And on a minimum, I'm seeing the patient quite frequently, anywhere between two to three times a week for the first four weeks to get to an evaluation where we can see where we were at that time and also where we started. And then seeing, okay, what other things do we need to incorporate into their care plan? So it's a, that's a very difficult question out there. I have had patients I've only had to see a few times, and then there's patients in my clinic for literally six months. And then there's patients that you will see once and immediately refer the patient out to someone like our spine surgeon that for an emergency spine surgery too. I mean, that's, that's what we're talking about where our chiropractors have the wisdom and discernment to, to recognize their limitations and to know when something is an outlier. When we're dealing with a patient that is not appropriately managed in chiropractic care. Uh, and, and that's where we only uh, employ chiropractors that have that experience, wisdom, knowledge, and expertise to know when he or she needs to refer that patient out to an expert for emergency care. And so that's, that's what we're talking about, about collaborating with one another, uh, getting imaging at the appropriate time, having surgeons and specialists at their beck and call at their fingertips uh, where they can just immediately schedule that patient for an orthopedic uh, specialty consult uh, that same day uh, for emergent care. Um, and so that, that's very important, I think, to have that access and to not um, misguide that patient that potentially can do further harm by holding on to that patient uh, and allowing them to suffer from, God forbid, permanent nerve damage or miss a tumor or things like that. So I think, you know, to me, that is the whole comprehensive package that we offer our patients at the KL Orthopedic Center um, that is so important to emphasize and to replicate. On that note, um, Dr. Saint, can you speak to uh, chiropractors out there that may be considering uh, joining a facility such as ours where we deliver that whole package, that comprehensive pair. How has your alliance um, with Kale Orthopedic Center joining forces, how has that benefited you personally? How has it benefited you professionally? And most importantly, how has it benefited our patients? Well, let me just go back a little bit in history. And I said before that I've been a patient myself and uh, unfortunately tearing my ACL three times, uh, it is possible, uh, and having to be under physical therapy care for all those years, I wanted to create myself a professional office that had chiropractic and physical therapy. So I did that for many years. And then I incorporated medical in, into my team. And for this past year, Dr. Kelly joined your team because not only what you have, but you have so much. 
all these different services and being able to work together and being able to get things done immediately. That is one of the dynamics of what we have, seeing patients same day. And if it's not same day, it's the next day. And uh, it, it's we're dealing with a world that's so difficult to navigate around insurance, around their protocols. And each insurance many times has their own policies and procedures. However, we do the best for the patient. And that's always been your model, you know, give the best patient care that we can give. And um, it's the dynamic of, of working with the Kale model. It's just absolutely wonderful. And I was so, you know, for years, I was doing things alone in the practice. And, you know, that you can go so far with that and you need to have support. And the support structure that we have here with all these different departments is just absolutely wonderful. And uh, it's something that makes us uh, unique. Uh, some practices have maybe, you know, a, a doctor in their group that can handle certain things. We have specialists across the board. Um, and it's just an, a phenomenal uh, team that you put together. Thank you. Thank you. And we're honored to have you as part of that, Dr. Saint, for sure. Are there any things that you'd like to demonstrate to our patients with respect to some models, some of the techniques that you employ, some of the basic uh, anatomy that you typically deal with on a, on a daily basis? Absolutely. So, Dr. Saint, what are we looking at here? So this is the lumbar spine. We have five lumbar vertebra. In between each of the vertebra, we have a cushion known as a spinal disc. So that's the lower back. This is the lower back. Uh, this model is showing right here that we have a red herniated disc that's actually compressing and coming out and hitting the spinal nerve. Right. So if we look at this model from the side, we're looking at this is the sacrum where the tailbone would be down here. We have the vertebral bodies L5, L4, L3, L2, L1, and between the vertebral bodies, we have what's called the intervertebral discs. And in this particular place, uh, at this disc level, it appears that there's a disc that is what we call herniated. It's, it's pushed out and it's putting pressure on that nerve. And that's what we call a disc herniation. And when it puts pressure on that nerve, uh, that patient will feel pain and discomfort, numbness and tingling, and potentially weakness along the, co uh, along the course of that nerve root, wherever that nerve root goes, typically down into the buttocks and down the leg somewhere. So how are you going to treat that uh, in chiropractic, Dr. Saint? Well, with chiropractic, there are different techniques that we use in the office uh, that are using our hands free instrumentation as long as our hands adjusting. However, we also use something called spinal decompression therapy. Uh, and this is actually something that was uh, designed by the medical profession, actually, a way of elongating, getting motion into the spine. And it does so by causing negative pressure. We use a harness system and literally we cause a stretching pumping mechanism just like I'm doing. Now for this to occur, the patient is actually laying down on their back. They're very comfortable. A session goes for anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes. There's a harness system around the stomach as well as a harness system around the upper torso. And again, we're causing this type of motion. And very slowly, very gently, we're changing the pressure in that disc. And the goal is for that disc to literally get sucked back into its normal position because it's actually stuck. And the body doesn't want to be stuck. The body wants to constantly go through a natural healing ability. If I cut my skin, I will start to bleed. I'll start to get a, a, a scab. The body will go through a whole course and I'll get new skin. The same thing wants to happen here. Unfortunately, if it can't happen, welcome to the team at Kale Orthopedics that can go in surgically and repair that. But on a non-invasive, non-surgical way, there's a high likelihood that we can actually help these patients as well. All right. So the concept is to create a negative pressure to reduce that disc herniation by performing that distraction technique. You're also taking pressure off the nerve roots that are exiting, uh, that are being compressed in that spinal foramen, that little hole on the side. Um, at, you know, below every pedicle right here, there's a nerve root that's exiting. And by causing that distraction, it's opening up that spinal foramen and decompressing that nerve. So hopefully that would alleviate the patient's symptoms. Is this uh, akin to the DRX uh, 9000 machine that people use? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, along with what we do on the mechanical side, as we discussed earlier, there's a chemical portion to this. And 
I have found that using our interventional pain management doctors to help you bring inflammation down, almost like a spark plug to an engine, starts the engine, that when the body is so inflamed, if we can get in there and put medication around that nerve root, around that facet joint, it just brings it down and then the body is so much easier to expand and for us to stretch it. So we're, it's a multimodal approach. We're hitting it from many different angles, physical therapy, chiropractic, uh, oral anti-inflammatories, interventional pain management procedures. So it's a multimodal approach to patient care uh, to give the patient everything we have in our armamentarium to make that patient better, right? Yes, and and I find, Doc, which is the, the best here is that there's many times that I, I say this in a nice way, we'll throw the kitchen sink at the patient because the patients come to us, they've already been either self-medicating or been on medications for longer periods of time and we'll have to get more aggressive. The great news is the majority of our patients that come in, we can start with a very conservative approach. We can start and we can add along the way if we're not getting to the certain bench marks that we need. So not every patient needs to come in here and get pain management injections right away. We right. can start with, say, acupuncture and maybe some oral medication. But the great news is that we can pivot. And that is the biggest thing that I love about working with the kale model, being able to pivot, get a test, make a, a, a decision, collaborate with another doctor. And that way, the patient gets the care that they need immediately not three months down the road. Beautifully articulated, Dr. Saint. Thank you so much. So th this is the cervical spine. So this is the back of our head. This is the skull right here, okay? okay. And we have our cervical spine. Which our is, neck. Yeah, our neck, which is composed of seven vertebrae along with a cushion in between each vertebra okay. that allows the spinal nerve to exit as well. And the model of the neck is so important because due to injuries, specifically whiplash injuries, and we always assume a whiplash being an automobile injury where the head gets thrown forward and back, but it can be contact sports. It can be just slipping down or missing a stair or two. And unfortunately, this curvature of our neck can many times go straight or actually go the opposite way. So when, when normally it's supposed to be in that lordotic posture, right? What we call that lordotic posture. Correct. Like that. Correct. And unfortunately, you know, most of us are on our phones all day long with the head position down, again, working on laptops, the curvature in the neck is lost. So we see this on an x-ray. Okay, and then also when necessary on an MRI, we can actually see the spinal cord being affected. We can see the disc being involved, whether it's a bulge or herniation, and of course the nerve root mm -hmm. showing irritation and inflammation. So one of the tools that I use in, a, in my practice is I use instrumentation adjusting, which this is called the impulse adjuster right here. Okay. And it has actually a dual function. It has the dual tip here. And what we're able to do, Doc, is what literally with the patient laying face down, we can take this instrument and it actually works very light and it actually works on speed. Mm. And we can literally drive the neck and bring that neck back into it, its normal posture. And we literally, after the adjustment when it's done, by palpating the patient beforehand and afterwards, patients can literally feel the difference of muscles that are relaxed, and many times their range of motion has actually come back. So what's the mechanism of action with that impulse adjuster? Well, it, it's, it's life force, okay? And by actually pressing in and, and, and giving the impulses, it works on speed. And by giving speed, it's causing the vertebra to jump back and forth. So again, what's great about this, ligaments and tendons are not being really uh, touched at all. Um, it takes away any type of crepitus feeling, so patients are not going to hear any type of noise. Quite often after the adjustment, I have patients say to me, that's it? I said, that's it, but you will be feeling some soreness <laughs> yeah. the, the next day. Uh, and again, these are great things in how we can treat a patient without having to use our hands. So it's just wonderful when patients have degeneration, some patients who have even have some you know, beginnings of osteoporosis because this, again, it's a very light force technique. That's beautiful. Thank you for that demonstration. And just to clarify, uh, when you say light force, you're talking about uh, force that is gentle, correct? Gentle force. We're not talking about light as in ultraviolet rays, light force, correct? Correct. All right. So we're talking about gentle force because I know you meant you mentioned light force uh, throughout this uh, podcast and I just wanted to clarify for our listening and viewing audience. Speaking of light, uh, 
I do know that uh, some uh, of our providers employ light energy as well. One particular example is uh, the MLS laser, the robotic laser machine that we have in our offices where essentially it utilizes two different wavelengths of light energy. Uh, one of those uh, wavelengths is to decrease pain and one of the other wavelengths is to decrease inflammation. So by decreasing Increasing inflammation and increasing blood flow to the region. In addition to working on the uh, the nerve fibers that sense pain, we're also able to alleviate uh, some pain and discomfort as well as inflammation and promote healing by increasing blood flow with the usage of the MLS laser uh, light energy techniques. So that's uh, that's uh, just something else that we uh, perform at our facilities as well. Um, so uh, any. Any closing words that you'd like to uh, leave this podcast with, Dr. Singh? Well, again, thank you so much for, for having me. And, uh, you know, if, if patients have specific questions, number one, they can always reach out. I would love to sit down and, and discuss things with them. And understand that uh, chiropractic could be a, a great benefit to their care and to their entire well-being. Uh, but again, has to be assessed properly and seeing if, you know, what they have, if I can even possibly help them. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Sain. It's really been uh, such a pleasure working with you and, and having you as part of the Kale Orthopedic Center. Your patients just adore you. You've been so uh, helpful in caring for our patients. And, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's a beautiful compliment uh, to our practice, uh, adding the chiropractic services, but not only chiropractic, all the other services that Dr. Saint uh, mentioned, the acupuncture, the physical therapy, and you know the holistic approach we have to patient care as well. Uh, conservative management is uh, something that we we uh, definitely uh, hope uh, for for our patients and to to manage their symptoms entirely with. But unfortunately, sometimes they will require something more invasive, and we have that as well. Uh, our our main goal is to take care of the patient and just get them better as fast as possible, as quickly as possible, so that they can enjoy the quality of, uh, of life that they all deserve. Uh, and so thank you so much for spending some time with me this morning. And, uh, you know, I hope that our viewing and listening audience has found this uh, to be helpful and that they will entrust uh, our chiropractors uh, to help deliver the best uh, musculoskeletal care uh, to aid in their recovery. 